What's going on, fam? It's Nick here. Just driving around today, selling some Medicare, amongst other things. And my collar's a little wonky. But what I was going to say, and something that I learned is really important, is how you think about yourself, your self-talk. And in my life, I've noticed that that self-talk has changed many times, and it will always change. But the reason you need that, and this is a really important thing for sales motivation, it's just my pen if anybody wants to know what that's sticking out. Sales motivation or inside motivation. How you talk to yourself is the biggest predictor of how you feel. How you feel will affect how you perform. So what do I mean by that? So I know like Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, talks about, you know, state management. Tony Robbins talks about state management, you know, emotional management. That's something that we're not really taught very well throughout our lives, that your emotional management is the biggest and most important thing that you're going to do in your day-to-day life. There's an old proverb that says, don't ever speak ill of yourself because the warrior within will hear it and he will be lessened by it. The reason for that is your mood, your state, how your mindset is, how you're thinking, that all pushes you in certain directions, good or bad. So what I was saying to that point is when your mind is clear, your attitude is positive, you feel relatively happy, content, your brain is more open to solve problems and come up with ideas particularly if you believe you can solve the idea. If you think you can do it, your brain will work its best to find a way for you to do it. You know, the human mind is a problem-solving engine. It's what it does all day. Solve problems, self-correct, solve problems, self-correct. But your subconscious mind, that is your, your basic programming. That's your autopilot. You want to have both of those things, your, your, your high-functioning thinking mind and your subconscious mind working together to give you the ideal state. If you're in the perfect state of mind when you're making a sale, when you're going on a date, when you're talking to your husband or wife, you're talking to your boss, you're talking to your children, doesn't matter. You need to be in the perfect state of mind to have these conversations and interactions so that you not only can be at the top of your game, You can get what you want from these people. People will always, always, always lean towards people in a better state of mind, better state of mood, better state in general. They'll always lean towards them. They will always yield to that person. The very negative person will always yield to the very positive person. It's just more, it's just, it takes more energy to resist. The negative person won't do it. So you want to be that positive, high-functioning, high-state person. And, you know, they don't teach you this in school. You know, they don't teach you this in college. But it's worth, you know, a lifetime of hardship just to find out that that is one of the secrets to being successful. You know, you have to attack every day and get up and do it. Even if it's something you don't want to do or it sucks, it's painful, it's not fun, you get worked up, you get stressed. I am one of those people. I get very upset sometimes over stupid shit that I can't control. And that's why for me, working on my state management, my mood management, you know, my emotional management, that's so important. But I will get up and do it anyway because my subconscious programming says we got to get up. We got to do this work. We're getting closer. We're the best. Prove it. Be the best. What would the best do? The best will just fucking get through it. They'll just grind harder. That helps you get up in the morning on days that you don't want to fucking do it. That helps you do things that are hard or not fun or very profitable because you know you have to try to see if it will work. You have to manage those emotions. If you let yourself, and as I said, I'm victim to it. You get yourself in a negative mind space, a negative spiral. You know, I'm lucky that I have my wife, you know, my business manager and people around me to help pull me out of that negative, you know, that negative, you know, know, uh, I guess whirlpool because it just sucks you down. You want to stay away from that. Even if you're not positive, don't be negative. 
You know, you don't have to think, oh my God, today's amazing, but you got to say today's good. You know, today's good enough. Today's, today will be okay. We're going to do it. No worries. That in itself, it's not taught to you at school. You know, nobody, no teacher I've ever said says, hey, Nick, if you figure out how to manage your day-to-day mindset and mood, it'll help you make an extra million dollars. No one has ever fucking said that to me, and I'm saying it to you right now. If you can manage your mindset, the opportunities, the abilities, and the struggles you go through, not only will they be easier and more abundant, you will not feel as worn down by them. So one of the things I always like to do, and it's kind of a psychological trick that it makes no, you're not really taught why this works other than the fact that it does. If you ever feel really tired or really sore or something's just terribly wrong, literally say out loud, I'm not that sore. I'm not that tired. This isn't that bad. Let's just, you know, we'll just keep doing it. We could do this forever. We could struggle through this forever. It's not even that bad. It's not that hard. I'm not that tired. Just by saying that, you're increasing your mental space and your mental management to not feel as tired. Your brain will literally say, maybe we don't feel that tired. Your body's probably going to agree because your main, your mind will make things worse than your body's actually feeling in a lot of situations. Not all, but some. So if you literally say, well, I'm not that tired. This is not that bad. I can get through this. You'd be surprised how much that helps you. The same concept, I think Brad Lee said it, where, you know, you shift your way you look at things when you say, oh, I got to do my sales calls or I got to go run my appointments or I got to follow up. Why don't you change the word got to get? I get to do my sales calls. I get opportunities to make money. I get to follow up with people. I get to make a difference. That little difference in language tells your brain that it's something you look forward to doing. It's a positive not it's a burden and those little tricks are what will help keep you motivated when things aren't going well when you're taking a beating I mean I had a couple of days uh, over the past couple of weeks where I have six ten appointments a day and I might see one person because you know whatever you know they forgot you know there was a parade there you're just stupid things that I have no no idea that were even happening you know somebody you know moved out of town just, just stupid shit where you think, wow, is this really worth my time? You know, I, I've spent $80 in gas for my truck driving around today and I literally saw one person and didn't fucking sell them. Those days are going to happen, but that doesn't stop me from the next day coming out and doing it again because the yesterday sucked. That doesn't mean today's not going to be amazing. You know, why would it, why would you assume that? And that's because you got that negative mindset creeping on you and that should motivate you. So that the ultimate purpose of this video is to educate you on a sales tip that has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's, it doesn't matter what's happening. Managing your mental state is the most important thing to a sale. Most important thing to a successful career. Most important thing to making money because you could do the same thing every fucking day and get a different result every time. Now, granted, those results will be limited to what the results could be but it might be different every time. You know, today you make a sale, today you don't, next day you do, today you don't. Every day is different. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. But if you do it consistently, you can have a business. You can be very successful. Like with what I do, I don't need that many yeses to make pretty good money. I don't need that many yeses to have a good renewal. I don't need to resell people hundreds of times. It's, it's, uh, It's a nice thing. But you gotta manage your mind to keep you on track, to keep you consistently doing the right things. And that's where most people fall down when they want to be successful. Everybody wants to be rich today. It's not realistic. It's not a thing. It's just, it's not a thing. What do the biggest companies in the world all have in common? Even the biggest ones have some time under their belt, period. They have some time under their belt. You know, the Apples, the Googles, the whatever. Yes, they went from zero to a lot very quickly, but they also went from zero to 10,000, zero to 100,000. Those were probably grinding slow times that we don't even read about because no one gives a shit unless you're winning. 
And that's what's so deceptive. It's like, yeah, it was an overnight success, but it took 10 years or it took 20 years or it took a lifetime. People don't realize that. They just see the glitz and the glam and the big numbers and they think, oh, wow, like, you know, that's, they just one day were a billionaire. You know, one day they made a billion dollar business. No, they made a good business and then they did everything right. They got funded. You know, they did all the right steps, worked really hard, grew, acquired, grew, acquired, learned, researched, did more, did more, did more, did more. And now we know who they are. And that normally takes a span of at least a year, if not 10. Very simple. You know, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, another example I was like, say, is Apple computer. You know, Apple has went broke or, you 